Maranatha, my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another quick bite, living the word. Today our word is going to come again from Luke. Uh, we continue to look at the Passion Week, uh, the Suffering Week of our Savior uh, before Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, when we celebrate our resurrected Savior. So uh, we uh, take a look at this one today and what would have happened, uh, traditionally speaking, on Tuesday of that week. And what really happened was Jesus sat in the temple teaching, teaching the people, giving all sorts of instructions, kind of that, if you can imagine uh, if you had your, you, you were on your last leg, so to speak, I hate to put it that way, but you're on your, 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 your last week of life, the importance of what you would share with those you love and care about and, and the teaching that you might try to impose or, or, or to, um, not impose, but to uh, uh, share with them or to um, impart, that's the word I'm looking for, the wisdom and, and teaching you might try to impart to them. So that's what he's doing. And so there's a lot of things that he covers throughout this, not the least of which, as he talks about the answering their question about the end times. When, when, when shall these things be? Remember, he said, no stone upon it will be left upon the other. He goes, when shall these things be? He goes, you know, when shall the end times be, so to speak? And and he answers all the different questions about that. You'll hear wars and rumors of wars, and but still not the end yet. Don't worry. And he goes on. But what is interesting to me about this is what he says after he talks about those who are going to be worrying about the end times. When you're watching for the end times, he says these words. And we're going to pick it up now in Luke chapter 21, picking up at verse 34. Uh, and, and we're going to read down through verse 36. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, I'm going to go at this a little backwards to begin with this morning. A lot of people want to look at verse 36, and they want to act like somehow there's going to be some who are going to escape and some who aren't going to escape. What makes us worthy to escape? Is it our actions? Is it our beliefs? Is it our works? No, it's his work, the work he's about to complete upon the cross. That's what he's saying here. So pray, watch therefore and pray. Because remember, he hasn't died yet. They, had, they haven't been able to place their faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection yet. So he's saying, watch and pray therefore that you be worthy to escape. In other words, that you will come to the faith, the knowledge of who I am and who I was so that you can escape these things. So don't let anybody trick you, fool you into thinking that somehow uh, you have to be somehow worthy uh, or good enough to be able to escape. You have to Place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in him fully for his completed work upon the cross through his death and resurrection to be worthy to escape. But what he says before this to me is of, of more interest because I would say to a lot of ways, this is what we see the church, the snare the church falls into oftentimes. The snare that Christians fall into oftentimes. He says, and take heed, this is verse 34 again, to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. He literally is saying, guys, you need to get your eyes off this world and keep your eyes on me. He goes, don't get so, and so betting means to be gluttonous and drunkenness. We know what that is, right? And then the cares of this world. So in other words, the idea of what he's saying here is, is don't get so wrapped up in how wonderful your life is right now here in this world that you miss what's coming, that you miss that day coming, that you forget that that day is coming. Keep your eyes upon me. For as a snare shall it come to, uh, to, to on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole of the whole earth. And he says, because that's the point. We want to not be caught in that snare, so to speak. We want to know this is what's coming. So when we see all these troubles and all these things like this, we don't go, oh, but what happened to all the good food I used to have in Egypt? What happened to all the wonderful foods we used to eat in the world? What happened to all the things we were able to drink and we didn't suffer? That's a lie. He says, focus on me. Because when those things come, then you can still have those things if you just rest in the knowledge that I'm providing for you what you need. So at the end of the day, and then on this Tuesday, uh, as we look at the Passion Week of our Savior, I think the one lesson I really want us to come away with is that he was really encouraging the people to keep their eyes upon him, upon heaven and upon his Father, not focused with all the things around them. I love you, we love you, God loves you, and God's got this.